This is Build Your Difference, a podcast created by Blue Artists, a brand platform with one goal, to help great visionaries like you build impressive brands. Every month, we'll bring you insightful tips, knowledge, and compelling stories from successful entrepreneurs and the Blue Artists team on how to create and market a winning brand that does more than just launch a new product or service. It starts an ongoing conversation because you're not just making a brand, you're making a difference. Let's start building. All right, so I'm John Marble, and this is Build Your Difference, and I'm here with Pierre Walters of Blue Artists. Hey, John. How you doing, Pierre? I'm doing, I'm doing well. I'm doing really, really well. It's good to see you. Man, it's good to see you. I think it's been forever since we've had you on the show. Yeah. <laughs> It has. Look, I've been, I've been cowering. I've been in my, I've been, in, I've been over the dark side, like, like the, what is it, the Star Wars, yeah. the fucking Star Wars shit. I've been. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm yeah, happy, yeah. To, I'm happy to emerge from my cave, and and chat with you. But you've been doing really, really well with the, with the, with the, with the Build Your Different show. Um, oh, we've been getting you. a lot of, yeah, a lot of fantastic feedback, and I'm so excited awesome. to be able to join you on an episode. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, great having you here, and uh, really excited because I know that um, um, you've kind of got something really special in the works. Yeah. I want to give away too much, right? <laughs> um, but to the extent that you're able, can you tell our listeners uh, what you might have going on at, the, at this time? Okay, yeah, I know. I, I know what you're getting at. So, yes. so there's a lot of things going on, but I know what specifically you're talking about. You're talking about Brand Desk. I am, right? yes. 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 So Brand Desk that let me John, Brand Desk is something that we have been working on now probably and by the way, excuse the background, they're actually doing some construction here. So if you hear any loud like like hammering or anything like that, my apologies. No worries, um, it's just a regular day for me in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Brand Desk, uh, we've been working on Brand Desk for, at this point, I'm going to say four to five years. Um, that long? Yeah. Oh yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Wow. I, know. I know. I've been getting little nibbles and teasers from mm -hmm. you over the past six months, maybe a year. Yeah. And so five years. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's been, it, you know, it's, it, it's, there's a, there's a process to obviously to like the development and all that. And I think initially I, I would say the first year was really just me getting educated uh, learning right. about what needs to happen from a development perspective and um but uh, the other part i would say i guess as a company is us learning and understanding um where our strengths and where our weaknesses really are um you know we launched our uh we launched our membership program blue artist plus Back in, I think it was 2015. I think we launched it in 2015. No, no, no. I, yeah, I think we launched a membership program in 2015 um, or 2014. And so we that was our first, like, the, at that time, there was nobody else doing any kind of membership type model in the creative space, okay, as a creative service. Um and so we were really trying to figure out how can we help our clients pay a small flat fee and still get access to all of the wealth of creative services that we, that we offer. Um, and so let me tell you, man, we learned a lot because in some ways that is, a, that is a huge benefit to clients. But in other ways, it creates challenges, you know, like payment, for example. Um, yeah. There goes the construction. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> Like how, how do we get, you know, how, how, um, so actually the one solution we came up with was credit lines and, um, and so our subscription model, our membership model gave our clients access to credit lines and those credit lines they could use to finance essentially any of the services that they want. Um, and, and that's probably been the most successful iteration of our membership program since we launched. But let me tell you, there have been so many lessons that we've learned, um, as an agency and as a company. And so Brand Desk is the culmination of, of all those lessons, of all those lessons learned, of all the error, of all the mistakes we've made along the way, of all the aha moments that we've that right. we've had along the way. They're finding their way into Brand Desk. Yes, and 
Awesome. And that's when you know all those little mistakes. At the end of the day, they're all worth it, right? It, yeah, to exactly. Point. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so John, yeah. when I say when I say this, it took over like five years, you know, I'm thinking about that entire journey. Yeah. You know, um, just because not, all the decisions that needed to be made, even before the programmers could start actually building the software, yeah. all of the decisions that had to be made in the in the design of the software, the architect of the architecture of the software, that came from all that experience, you know, um, just running the business. Mm. Now, I wanted to ask you. Mm-hmm. And this came to my mind when we kind of last spoke about this. When you were getting started with Brandesk, what exactly was, what planted the seed in your mind that, you know, oh, this is something we got to do. It might take us five, 10, whatever years, but, you know, I can see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. I think the impetus was, <laughs> the impetus, I, uh, it, well, my God. That's a loaded question because because there's a lot of there's a lot of I'm gonna say one of them yeah I'm gonna pick one of them um uh, uh, there was there was one time we had we had a fantastic client and he just happened to also be uh, an artist and we were working with him to build his brand uh, which was in I, I think it was in sort of the apparel space maybe he wanted to design. Uh, shirts and sell clothing, something like that. And we were helping him to build his brand. And at a certain point, he asked me, he said, Pierre, I would love to join your team at Blue Artist. I'd love to be an artist on your team. Yeah. And I thought about that and I was like, you know, not a problem. And at, at first, it seemed like a very simple request. Um, but then I, I said, well, I'll get back to you on that. But then I thought about it and I realized, wait a second, first of all, we are at capacity in terms of hmm. how many artists we have on staff. Um, and, and second, he's remote. How do we, how can we handle sort of, I'm very grateful to have clients who are remote and all over the country, but our actual team is local here in Washington, DC. Um, and it can make a difference. Yeah. And, and I, I, I thought to myself, goodness, wouldn't it be great if there was a way that we could sort of bring in more team members remotely mm-hmm. but mm. but bring them in in such a way where they fit naturally easily and comfortably right into our experience um and so that was that was a little seed that started it and so then i started looking at like well you know what what are you know what are some of the pain points that artists have out there when they're freelancing or when they're you know uh going from gig to gig um and I, and I started to look at some of the different uh, uh, sort of solutions, like uh, like Fiverr, for example, mm-hmm. or Upwork, even. Um, <laughs> and let me tell you, at first it was kind of intimidating because I thought, my goodness, like, goodness, anything you want, you can go to Fiverr and get, like, mm-hmm. anything you want. Like, there's so many things on Fiverr, um, or even on Upwork. Um, and 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 so I thought, wow, okay. Maybe we could just sort of tap into these services and, and use that as a way to bring in talent. But I, I very quickly learned that actually a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the uh, artists, and I think he was probably one of them, uh, are actually trying to get away from those types of platforms, and they're trying to find a place where they can call home. And and what I really mean is a place that is actually artist centric. And not nickel and diming and charging them for every little exactly. interaction, you know. You, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And now, you know, I understand. You know, these sites, you know, they're out. They're they're in a business. They need to make money. I get mm-hmm. it. You know, um, but it is hard when, and you know this as well from both ends. When you've um, been working on a project for how many weeks, maybe even months, I don't know, and you're expecting a certain payment, and then you've you know, I've had times where I, I forget that, you know, there's a certain percent com- commission for mm-hmm. using those sites. And I'm like, oh, here comes payday. And I'm like, oh, wait, that's right. Like 80, 100, 150, 200 goes to, you know. Oh, my goodness, know? yeah. And you've, you've worked for that money, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that was I, I totally. No, no. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, I totally understand. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, I think 
that was one of the pain points that I that I really kind of zeroed zeroed in on. Um, mm. But there were other pain points also, which you know may may be from the client perspective, which was you know because I actually have a lot of clients who come to Blue Artists and they come to Blue Artists as though they're sort of running away from Fiverr or running away from mm. clients. Now I know it's it's kind of hard to imagine but imagine like you know you're a client you go to fiverr and you buy a website and you spend a hundred dollars on this website you you've spent that money but when the the gig holder the the artist the freelancer gives you that website back now it's crap mm. it's it's like fucking terrible and you're like yeah. what what is this but that's it you've paid the money you're shit out of luck there's nothing you can do and um and so I have a lot of clients who are coming to Blue Artists because they've had terrible experiences on platforms like Fiverr, TopTal, Production Hub, even yeah. Upwork. Um, yeah. and, and, the, and, and so, you know, they, they come to us, they're willing to pay a little bit more because they know they're working with someone who understands and someone who gets it. And yeah. Yeah. that's a big you deal. You, yeah, because you care. Yeah. You know? And a lot of these other sites, you know, we've been mentioning Fiverr, Upwork. I, there's another one. I'm forgetting about it now. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, whether we're on there as a client or a freelancer, we're just another cog in the wheel with those sites. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I don't know. It just it seems like it'd be good for all all, all of us if we can just kind of etch that middleman out, you know, <laughs> and just have just have the people who, you know, client freelancer who are actually care about creating good work yeah. or getting a good product back. Yeah. You know, I'm, I mean, exactly. I'm with you, but I, I, I wanted to figure out how can we quantify that? Like, how can mm. we, uh, it, it seems to me like no matter how beautiful these websites are, people are running away. All right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and sure, it's great that I care. I'm bringing in, I'm, you know, clients are coming, they're dealing with me, I care, or they're coming into Blue Waters and I, and I put them with a, with a designer or a different right. producer and they have a great experience because they get that sense that somebody cares. But how do I, how do I kind of quantify what that is, that, 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 that sense of care and mm -hmm. sort of uh, translate that over scale so that, so that we could be bringing in, you know, hundreds hundreds times the amount of clients we're bringing in and the same amount for artists and but still sort of hold on to what it is that makes people want to deal with a human being you know yeah. instead of just uh uh yeah. the, whatever the cheapest price is yeah thanks for listening to this episode of build your difference if you'd like to learn more about how blue artists can help you develop a distinguished brand that inspires and engages a growing audience then please visit us at www blue-artist.com and be sure and subscribe to our monthly podcast for the latest tips and trends in brand development and marketing and remember you're not just making a brand you're making a difference start building yours today